Welcome to this video where we talk about how to represent the interactions in a free body diagram, in a two-dimensional free body diagram, that come about from pinned joints. A pinned joint is a joint that's free to rotate about a pin or more generally about a bearing. And pinned joints can produce forces in both the x and y direction, but they can't produce a couple. Uh, that's because the joint um, is set up so that uh, uh, there's no friction when you rotate um, around the pin. So um, let's actually just go straight to the example of how to set up the forces then for a free body diagram that includes pinned joints. I have here a crane and uh, what we'd like to do is uh, find the free body diagram of the boom for the crane, basically this uh, long orange arm. Okay, and so the first thing we need to do is define the system that we're interested in. Uh, this system will be the boom. We will not be interested in the loadout here. We will not be interested in this hydraulic cylinder here. And we're assuming that somewhere here inside the body of the crane is a joint or a pin, although in this case I'm sure it's not just a pin, it's probably a, bearing, a joint with bearings and so on, about which the boom can rotate. So the idea is the boom rotates about this point and lifts up like this or goes down like this. Okay, so again we're interested in the boom, not anything else. So the next step would be to sketch the system, and I've actually done that. This is our boom. You'll notice that I've drawn the pin here where the uh, uh, boom is connected to the body of the crane, and the pin here where the hydraulic cylinder is attached to the boom. Okay, so now let's look at where specifically uh, the body's been cut from its environment. And again, we've cut off the load here, so that's one place it's been cut. We've cut off the hydraulic cylinder, and we've detached the boom from the rest of the crane at this pivot. Okay, so those are the three points where, or those are the, yeah, the three points where we will need to uh, uh, show forces that interact with the boom. Uh, we'll assume that the center of gravity for the boom is about there. Okay, actually that's probably a little too high. We'll assume that the center of gravity for the boom is about there. Okay, so now that we um, we have these things worked out, let's go to the free body diagram and actually uh, put these forces on. Okay, so we'll begin with um, this pin down here and basically uh, we know there'll be no couple, that is no torque applied at this point, but the force exerted by the crane on the boom in general will have a horizontal component and a vertical component, so this would be one way to represent it. And in the most general case, we don't know uh, what the magnitude of the horizontal and vertical components are. Um, so another way of representing this would be to draw a vector that represents both the horizontal and vertical components. Uh, and the idea would be that this vector, uh, its magnitude and its orientation are unknown to us. Similarly, at this pin, we can have a vertical component and we can have a horizontal component. And again, uh, we typically don't know the magnitude of either of those, so we might also represent this as a single vector whose direction and magnitude are unknown. And the idea is uh, you then use statics or dynamics uh, depending on what type of problem you're trying to solve to find these forces. Now, um, we'll go, we won't actually talk about these, but in order to be complete, 
there's forces exerted by the cables hanging off of the end of the boom. And uh, we had the center of gravity here. So there is a force, a weight force, which um, typically is straight down. Uh, we might want to label these. So for example, um, this might be FHX and FHY. That would be the force at the hydraulic pin in the X and Y direction. And um, this might be, I don't know, FJY for the joint, FJX. Um, so, in any case, the idea is that when we have a pin connection, uh, it can exert forces in both the X and Y direction. And we typically don't know the magnitude or the direction of those forces that are exerted. Although sometimes we can use knowledge of um, statics or dynamics to constrain them. Uh, for example, in the case here that we have a hydraulic cylinder, uh, because the hydraulic cylinder uh, is basically connected between two points, we would know that the force will be uh, directed along the axis of the hydraulic cylinder. But uh, typically, we won't know things like that. Um, in any case, uh, you want to make sure you build your free body diagram before you start doing a lot of reasoning in terms of statics and dynamics, at least until you get good at this process, because it gives you less opportunity to confuse things. So, in any case, this is how uh, you handle free body diagrams of, uh, of uh, pin joints on members. So, thanks for watching.